what different acne breakouts mean depending on their location. So sometimes patterns of acne can actually give us clues on their cause and treatment. I'm going to go over the different locations that you may be getting acne and also any troubleshooting and treatments that you can do at home and with your dermatologist. If you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Abby Waldman. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Boston at Brigham and Women's Hospital. So first, a common one is actually the hairline. And this can be the front of the hairline, it can be little pimples on the scalp and the lower neck, sort of the hairline part of the neck. And this is typically due to hair products, things that you're putting on your hair every day. There are a lot of allergens that cause breakouts in these hair products. So if you have this pattern of breakouts sort of right along the hairline, what I recommend you doing is kind of stripping down, starting from scratch and adding things back in. So you can use something really basic that has no additives. I recommend Vanacream Free and Clear Shampoo. And after doing just that for a few days, then you want to add back in one product at a time. And think of all your hair products that you use. So that's shampoo, that's conditioner, that may be dry shampoo, it might be hair styling products. So whatever you use, don't add them all back in at once. Just go one by one, usually every like three to four days. If you don't have any reaction after the first, then you can go in and add an additional product. Oftentimes you can figure out what's causing the problem if you act like a detective. So sometimes a faster way to identify the problem is to get patch testing. Not all dermatologists offer patch testing. Uh, sometimes there's long wait lists to get in. So that's certainly another way to hone down on the cause of your hairline acne. And moving on to the one-sided cheek. This is usually due to a dirty phone or a dirty pillowcase. So oftentimes people sleep on one side more than the other. And so if it's your pillowcase causing an issue, then you're gonna notice it being just on one side of the cheek. So I recommend changing your pillowcase every week at least. And to make sure you're washing your laundry in a hypoallergenic detergent in case it's actually the detergent that's causing you to break out. Also, you wanna avoid any dryer sheets or anything that you might be adding with fragrance or anything else that could have common allergens that can be contributing to these breakouts. For your phone, you wanna wipe it down after every use or at least once a day. So another common place to get breakouts is actually along the jawline. Generally, lower facial acne is, can be contributed to hormone imbalance. That's why you generally see those lower face jaw acne um, when you're going through puberty, for instance. Uh, if you're taking any supplementary steroids, if you're even going on or off some hormonal birth control, that can contribute to these breakouts in the jawline. Oftentimes women will notice that it fluctuates and changes with their menstrual cycle. Also women with polycystic ovarian syndrome will present usually with a lower face jawline acne, um, and that usually goes along with obesity and hirsutism, although not always. So generally the simplest thing to do for this type of acne is to stop any hormonal supplements that you're taking. So if you're taking steroids, if you've recently changed your birth control and you think that that might be contributing, certainly talk to your physician. You may consider going on an acne diet. You can see my video here on what that entails. If you've made those changes and you're still suffering from hormonal acne, you may need the help of a dermatologist. There's lots of medications that can help with this, including spironolactone, oral antibiotics, topical antibiotics, topical retinoids, oral retinoids like Accutane. Many of these treatments can be quite helpful depending on the severity of your acne. So what if you're breaking out just around your mouth and maybe like right up into the nasolabial folds? This is a common type of breakout called perioral dermatitis. So perioral dermatitis has no one specific cause. Uh, it may again require a little bit of detective work. Now sometimes it can be from just a new facial product. So even if you're putting it all over your face, you may actually only be breaking out right around the mouth. So generally think like, what have I started in the last month that may be contributing and try to back off that and then reintroduce it uh, to see if that was in fact the culprit. Oftentimes what I recommend is similar to sort of the hair products, just going back to a really basic, basic skincare routine and then adding things as needed. So the basic skincare is a gentle cleanser or even just using water to wash your face, a simple moisturizer with sunscreen. If you're using any facial products that contain steroids, uh, even over-the-counter cortisones, those can be contributing to perioral dermatitis. So make sure you're aware of what is in your face product, especially if you ordered it online or from another country. Sometimes steroids can be hiding in those products. 
As you may or may not know, we have quite a bit of bacteria and fungi in our mouth. Oftentimes those bacteria can kind of can kind of escape and set up shop right around your mouth. And I definitely think that increased when we were all wearing a lot of face masks during the pandemic because the bacteria and fungus would just get trapped and have nowhere to go and just kind of hang out and cause perioral dermatitis. You always want to obviously do good dental hygiene, use a mouthwash. If you do suspect it's your face mask, um, make sure you're cleaning your cloth mask regularly. And if you're a healthcare worker and you have to use a surgical mask regularly and you think that may be contributing, oftentimes surgical masks actually have formaldehyde releasers. That's a really common contact allergen. I actually have, get contact allergies from formaldehyde releasers and can't wear a surgical mask directly on my skin without getting perioral dermatitis. And so you may consider just wearing a clean cloth mask underneath if that's the case and you suspect that may be the issue for you. In terms of treatment, oftentimes a topical antimicrobial or antifungal is trialed. Um, for antifungal, the over-the-counter ones are quite good. Terbinafin also goes by Lamisil is over-the-counter. Clotrimazole is over-the-counter. Um, you can always trial those. They might not not work you may need something stronger like an oral antibiotic uh, and you just work with your dermatologist to figure out the best treatment for you now what if you're just getting breakouts in your nose and your cheeks now dermatologists actually look for clues on really what type of lesion you're having on your nose and your cheeks now if you're having these sort of open comedones or closed comedones that's really good for acne vulgaris which is kind of the typical acne that you think of however if you're having really red inflammatory lesions that can be one of two things. It can be typical acne, but it can actually be something called rosacea, especially papular pustular rosacea. Papular pustular rosacea generally has some flushing involved, um, some redness. It may flare when you're eating spicy foods, when you're drinking a lot of caffeine, when you're out in the sun quite a bit. Uh, if you notice some of these type of triggers for your acne on your nose and your cheeks, it may not actually be typical acne vulgaris. It may be something called rosacea, has a totally different treatment line, and you may not actually respond well to the typical acne medications that you see advertised. For rosacea, aside from avoiding those triggers, you really want to work with the dermatologist to get the right treatment. Sometimes it's topical medications. Sometimes it can be kind of removing, trying to remove like the typical bacteria and mites that live on the skin. And there are also oral medications that you can take that can help quite a bit. So talk to your dermatologist if you suspect rosacea actually is your problem and that's typically nose and cheeks. One other clue is sometimes your eyes can get really itchy and red. That will go along generally with rosacea more than acne vulgaris. So what if you're getting acne mostly on your chest and your back? So these locations can be just hormonal, um, especially if you know you're taking a steroid supplement, you're having a diet high in whey proteins, but wearing tight fitting clothing, um, especially when working out, can definitely contribute. Oftentimes folliculitis in these areas on the chest and the back can mimic acne. When fungus actually gets into the follicle around, around the hair follicle and causes these pimples, again, a dermatologist will be able to differentiate between the two based on looking closely at where the pimples are actually happening. Folliculitis usually is caused by a bacteria or a fungus, and so the treatment can depend a little bit on what the culprit is. But just make sure you're washing well after you're working out. You may consider bathing with HippoCleanse, um, which is called chlorhexidine a few times a week. Do not get it in your eyes or your ears. And certainly talk to your dermatologist about other treatments if those basic lifestyle changes don't work. If you notice breakouts that are just where your hair hits, um, also again, think about hair products as the culprit. Now, if you're getting breakouts under your armpits, under your breasts and in your groin, or even in the, the intergluteal cleft on your buttocks, that may be a sign that you have something called hydradenitis superativa. Um, this can be very complicated, oftentimes runs in families, but can show up with other conditions. And we are definitely gonna seek out a good dermatologist to help you with this treatment. So if this was helpful, please like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more information on dermatology and all things skin. And please comment below on anything that's worked for you in terms of location-specific acne, and also on any videos you'd like to see in the future.